Good afternoon, everybody. I'll just wait for Monica to take off her coat. Thanks very much indeed for joining us this afternoon. I'm Tom Butcher of the Zero Project, and it's my absolute pleasure to chair this parallel session on sign language solutions. We'll hear this afternoon about some wonderful innovative practices that either make sign language more broadly available or professionalize it or indeed do both. I'm honored to be here with some amazing people. And rather than introduce them all now, one after the other, I shall do so before each of them speaks. So enough from me and over to the innovators. I should like first to introduce both Monica Haider and Matthias Fenkart from Equalizent. Monica is co-founder of Equalizent and managing director of it. She started it 16 years ago. And it's an adult education institute focusing on deafness, hearing loss, sign language, and diversity management. Her work focuses on the development and support of training and consulting projects. Matthias is authorized signatory course and resource management and quality control manager at the firm. He's responsible for quality management, project development, personnel management, and standardization of document processes, and planning training programs. So, Monica, over to you. Thank you very much. Can you press the button in front of you? Okay. You Thank you very much for the nice introduction. So, um, yes, we will do it um, twice. We will do it bilingual. So I will speak in English, and my colleague, my lovely best colleague, Matthias, will do it in sign languages. So uh, I think I will sit, and he will stay. Okay, okay, so, okay, in a way. So that's not a gentleman agreement. You need a microphone. It doesn't work because he want, she has to voice uh, Matthias. So that's okay. why I need a... Okay, no, okay. I got it. My fault, so. sorry. Interpreter's okay. fault. So Matthias said, I'm, a, I'm okay with standing up. Okay, okay. So then we are looking for our presentation. Hmm. Ah. ah, but it's here. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. Then, uh, so, um, um, we, uh, I want to give you a short overview about deaf people in Austria. Then you can have a better idea why we are doing this, why we are doing our work, and why we make it with this investment and engagement. Um, we have in Austria, we have about 10,000 people, deaf people in total, and there are 7 million inhabitants. Um, and we, we belong to one of the richest countries of the world, but 35% uh, of the deaf people have only low level jobs. Yeah? So to, only 7% are taught in sign language in school. Yeah? And we have, we have interpreters, we have some interpreters, we have about 115 in total, but only, only 150 in total. We, we would need about 500. To, to, that we have a, a fully interpretation, uh, interpretation then when we need interpretation. So, um, and only 60% of the interpreters work full-time. So, so that's, the, that's the surrounding situation. That means um, sign language um, has an 
important fact for deaf people and deaf power, and it's really, really necessary to have more sign language, and it's recognized in our, uh, our constitution since 2005, but uh, the, in the real situation, there are many situations where they don't have sign language. So, and I think that's very, very necessary why we uh, built up an adult center for deaf in, with, with all the offers are in sign language. So the next one. Huh. As we, I've told, uh, deaf people have little instruction language in sign language. They have a lot of barriers, and that's why they, are, they become our customers. Our customers are composed of deaf people and of hard of hearing people, and our main focus is that they get employment or they can keep their uh, work and not, don't lose it. Our idea is that we just give them sign language and, and written uh, German and to qualify them for, for their life at work. And We want also to, uh, to support and to foster the development of deaf employees in the companies. And we have 85 uh, employees. They work as a trainer. As trainers, they teach sign language. They teach different uh, various topics to the deaf people. And we work very easily together. We have 13 deaf uh, employees. And when we, when we talk or we have meetings in the company, we don't employ uh, interpreters, but we can all communicate in sign language. All our hearing employees are competent in sign language. We have several offers uh, for deaf and hard of hearing people. So we uh, have sign language uh, instructions, we have trainings for different uh, professions, and we really want to give uh, deaf people uh, a way to access their workplace. We have different uh, kinds of uh, instructions, for example, individual training or we have group training. Sometimes people are far away and they cannot travel to our training site, so we instruct them via webinars so that they can all participate in our education. But we also work with hearing people and we give them sensitization workshops to teach them how to deal with deaf employees and how to uh, tackle the issue of deafness. And we have also diversity management as one of our, uh, one of our topics and we have developed a diversity management tool that can be used to assess the, the diversity of an uh, diversity, uh, open, openness to diversity of a company. And we also offer some support for deaf people who are trying to find a new job. So we have something like an integration assistant who helps the them to prepare the documents they need, the CV and so on, and uh, go with them to the job interviews. And we have also some new 
uh, courses. We have opened access for deaf people to some professions that had been closed to them for many years. And we offer them preparation courses so that they can uh, really attend these uh, trainings that lead them to a new profession. It's a difficult situation for deaf people to find employment, but with our help, we have succeeded to give 70% of our customers find work, they find self-esteem, and they know how to communicate with hearing people. They really change their attitude and they show positive uh, attitude towards the hearing world. Um, and um, yes, as you can see, uh, it's very successful, our courses. And uh, for us, it's um, necessary to look what does uh, uh, deaf people need now, in, in, in now at this time. So, so uh, one of our um, important ways is to find new paths for deaf people. And we open new occupational fields for, fe uh, there are a lot of, um, uh, there are a lot of um, fields that were closed for uh, deaf people because they are deaf. And deaf means that they are not healthy enough for this job. And so we, we did a lot of work work with uh, the government and with also uh, further education schools that uh, they opened their mind and opened also this um, this uh, this field for deaf people. Uh, now at the moment we do it with uh, the family assistance as we heard before um, a lot 90 percent of the uh, of, of deaf children are born in hearing families, and for hearing families, this is a shock. They have now a deaf child, what they, shall, what they can do. And now we prepare deaf role models uh, as family assistants, and then, uh, then they can go in the family and help them when they have born a, a, a deaf uh, child, a hearing, a hearing families. So, uh, this is one of our new uh, occupational fields. The other one is uh, we, uh, we, we did 3D and, uh, and 2D animation. We know that uh, visual um, uh, fields uh, and visual communication is very necessary for deaf people and their expertise. And so we we built them up in this uh, technical technician way. Uh, also, we uh, we opened the field of kindergarten as assistance pedagogic. So and we uh, prepared them before and then now they make an, uh, their uh, the further education at uh, at at this normal school, uh, and they were translated in sign language by interpreters. Also, we do a lot of um, projects, European projects. Yeah? One of them was called Science for Handshakes. Here, we want to increase the employment of young deaf people, and we we built up uh, material sensitization workshops for uh, entrepreneurs and uh, human resources manager that they open their mind and heart to uh, that they also em employ deaf people and deaf young people and give them a, a chance for a job um, and. Uh, um, in, in, in another European project, we, uh, we built up school, school kits for young deaf people, and also we, we uh, translated books into sign language. And we make material and methods for bilingual teaching way for, tra for teachers. Um, and uh, we want to bring more um, uh, a, a sign language in our society, and so we worked with this 3D and uh, an animation of uh, deaf people to build up a uh, sign language avatar. And uh, we are working on different projects and want to bring uh, spread sign language more in the society with these avatars, like to translate um, uh, in information from websites and, and or films into sign language, or in, in the, we have a lot of ideas in the future with them. Also, we translated sign library, with the sign library, we translated uh, world literature, literature into sign language. And we did 
support in books until now, so it's very interesting for us also to speak with Gallaudet at University to do nearly the same way in a different one, but we, it's, it's nice to, to exchange our experience and work together maybe. And now at the moment we, we, um, we are in a European project with Italy and uh, Poland and uh, Slovakia, Slo Slovak Slovakia. Slovakia, <laughs> and uh, with, um, there we want to uh, develop a blended learning model for 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 um, deaf uh, pupils that they can build up their uh, CV for their own and how to make it, and we give them tips and to uh, to make it uh, to in, that they make it in their own uh, way and empowerment. And so on. So we, uh, for us, it's very, very, very necessary to always find new ways and don't make the, the, um, the make the same path because the community is very, um, very. It, it's a, um, it's it's a little community. It's only seven thousand uh, to ten thousand deaf people who are, and they are very different. And they need different offers. As Monica has already said, we really want to bring sign language into society, but not only into the hearing society, but we want to ha include everybody. So we have uh, an institution, so diversity by the diversity ball, and we have all kinds of uh, disabled people coming there. It's on the 5th of May of this year, and I would say a hearty welcome so that you can come to join us. We can have a ball together, and it is an important political signal, a message we want to give to the politicians that we are, we are an inclusive society, we want to do that, and this year is the 11th ball, so we have already done it for 10 years, and it has been a big success. Only one more. It's a, it's a, few, uh, it's a few in the future, in the, in the nearest future, and um, we are planning now to do an uh, exhibition. About, uh, it's called Hands Up uh, to bring hearing people in the in the world of deaf. Like um, maybe you find you notice a dialogue in the dark, like like uh, blind people have it. We do it with uh, f uh, to, to bring hearing people in the world and 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 situation how deaf people are living. So to, and we start in June in Vienna, and um, yes, you will find in, 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 in some days more information on our website, and we are re really happy that we can realize this in, uh, from June on. So, to talk. And to talk, we are at the end. You are happy about this. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, me too. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and um, Matthias and um, Monica will be selling tickets to the ball afterwards. So <laughs> if you'd like to see them outside. Thank you very much indeed for a, a really interesting presentation and wonderful work that you're doing. And I'm going to turn now to Corinne Vinopol, uh, who is also going to tell us about her wonderful work. I'm just going to do a very, very quick introduction. She said not to say very much. Um, um, Corinne, Dr. Finnepol, is president of the Institute for Disabilities Research and Training, IDRT, and under her invaluable leadership, the company was presented with a Tibbetts Award at the White House by the Small Business Administration for being a model of excellence in the Small Business Innovative Research Program, and she's going to tell us exactly how she got there and what she does. Over to you, Corinne. Hello, everyone. Um, our company, IDRT, has been in business for 32 years. And during that time, we've developed over 70 software products. Some are CD-based and some are online. Um, I'm not going to tell you about what we've been doing for 32 years because you would, be, you would fall asleep. 
Um, but at this point in my career, in the company's uh, stage of life, what we decided to do was to look at our vast amount of IP and figure out if there is a way for us to repurpose it for developing countries. And so what I want to talk to you about today is what we're doing in Morocco. So let me just give you a little context. In Morocco, 85% of the deaf children are not in school. And of the 15% that are in school, um, they're almost all being educated by deaf associations, and there's almost no education past sixth grade. Uh, needless to say, there's a lot of illiteracy. Um, there's another problem, and that is there's no special education instruction for teachers certainly no deaf education, and there's no interpreter training programs. There are almost no interpreters who are working within the classrooms. And almost all the teachers that are working there um, are undereducated and hearing. So as most of you know, who are familiar with sign language, um, the, Morocco has its own sign language, which is called Moroccan Sign Language, and it's the native language of most Moroccans. It is different than the spoken languages of the country. Um, one of the challenges for us is, as with all sign languages, it's not a printed language. So if you're developing software, you can't represent it in text. You have to represent it in video or animation or graphics. Um, in Morocco, one of the challenges we faced is that it's largely undocumented and in actuality, it's, it was pretty much unrecognized as a language at all. Um, now, as you also probably know, many of the children can't read, the deaf children can't read, but they can understand something that is provided in sign language very easily. So one of our challenges was how do we combine sign language with written literacy? So we were very fortunate um, in 2015 to be awarded a two-year cooperative agreement um, under the All Children Reading a Grand Challenge for Development competition, which was um, provided by USAID, um, World Vision, and Australia Aid. Um, this was later extended for an extra year because of the success that we're having over there. Um, the primary activities, first of all, our goal was initially to improve the Arabic reading ability of deaf children in first and second grade. Now, of course, in order to do that, that meant that we had to improve their sign language abilities too. But this is what was written to um, get it to be passed. Now, our principal activities um, are first of all to take assistive technology. So we're taking a piece of technology that we had developed for the US and Canada audience and repurpose it in Arabic and Moroccan sign language and then train stakeholders in how to use this. And we'll talk about this technology in a minute. The second was to develop an early grade reading and sign language assessment. USAID has been developing an early grade reading assessment, and this is the first time that they've tried to adapt it for um, deaf children. The third was to train stakeholders, teachers, families, deaf community members in instructional techniques to foster better reading and sign language skills among the deaf children, and also to evaluate the impact of our giving this technology and training on the children and on the teachers. Let's see if this, there we go. So the software that we have in the United States is called American Sign Language Clip and Create. And we actually have CD and online versions of this. And the purpose of this tool is to help teachers very efficiently create their own instructional materials with sign language supports. So there are five sections to this software. And this is the opening menu. Um, first of all, we have a dictionary of nearly 3,000 Moroccan sign language graphics, videos, corresponding Arabic words, concept pictures. We have definitions in both MSL and in Arabic. Now, this was a challenge because, remember, the language was not documented, so we actually had to go around and start documenting the language. There's also a publishing 
tool, and I call this a dummy down uh, Adobe Photoshop, where you can create your own materials, but you also have access to any of the graphics. Um, so there are probably around uh, 9,000 graphics in this piece of software. There are also templates, so you can just choose any of the words in our database and it will automatically um, create games and puzzles like finger spelling scrambles and crossword puzzles and flashcards. Um, we also did some storybooks to give examples of what can be done. And there's some instructional techniques to help teachers use the tool efficiently. Now, what we discovered was because there's so little communication around the country that there are huge regional variations in Moroccan sign language, including we found four different kinds of finger spelling. Shocker. Um, so we created an online piece of software where people could have access to our database, check to see if their regional sign was the same or different, and if it was different, actually sign to uh, the camera, and we would capture it and integrate it into our database. Um, we also took words from the EGRA tools that we were developing and the national curriculum and other requests from teachers and put them in the database. Um, and the stories that we put in um, were some of the ones that are being um, developed for the national curriculum for USA um, that is being done in concert with the Ministry of Education. Um, I also used some stories that I had written for another uh, grant with the US Department of Education. So our accomplishments, um, the software and hardware were distributed to teachers in our 10 project schools. And we were absolutely shocked because within two weeks, people who were doing things by hand had generated an avalanche of materials. And some of the teachers had never even had a mouse in their hand before. Um, so we walked in two weeks later and there were posters and handouts and things were going home to families and there were books. It was absolutely incredible. Now with the training, um, we really were surprised that teachers needed some very basic understanding. And we, the training that we've been given has changed perceptions in several key ways. First of all, teachers began to realize that you have to give deaf children intense full language stimulation as early as possible. Um, what we were seeing was children being given sign language after they failed around third grade or just vocabulary, but not full language. So that is changing. Um, they recognize that Moroccan Sign Language is a language, and it is the native language of deaf people in Morocco. And it should be honored, as well as they should respect and promote deaf children's culture and identity. Now, I talked about that early grade reading and sign language assessment. Um, we did that in concert with um, School to School and World Vision. Um, it was quite a challenge because um, some of the, some of the t tools like uh, nonsense word decoding absolutely is not appropriate for deaf children. And also the protocols of administration had to be modified because for hearing children, um, the person taking the data was looking down at um, a computer while the child was talking. And we know with deaf children, we have to have visual contact. contact. So even the protocol had to be changed. So we had to add video both for communicating some of, some of the instruction and the stimuli and also for recording the children's responses. Now, where are we going from here? First of all, um, we're gonna give more in-depth training. Um, in just a few weeks, I'm going back to Morocco from the US to do that. Um, we will be conducting, we just did our baseline and we're gonna do the end line uh, data taking on the EGRA, Salah. We call it Salah because it's also sign language assessment. And we're going to seek financial resources for taking these um, the software that we built and replicating it and distributing it in more areas of the country, as well as expanding the database, and also to see if there are other groups who would like us to modify these products for their countries. And of course, we're gonna measure our impact. 
So if anyone wants to contact me about anything we've been doing in the past or how what we're doing can be replicated in your countries, there's my contact. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Absolutely fascinating. Next, I move three down to Ka Yu Cheng. Um, you graduated from the Chinese University of Hong Kong in 2004, majoring in systems engineering and engineering management. After graduation, he joined the Center for Sign Linguistics and Deaf Studies as an assistant computer officer and is responsible there for developing the Asian Sign Bank for documenting Asian Sign Language data. You, can you tell us a wee bit more? Thank you, Tom. And I'm happy to be here today to share our project with you. Um, our project is called the Asian Side Bank. Okay. Um, unlike in the US and European countries, sign language research does not exist in most of the Asian countries. And with the inaccessibility to education and sign language training, the deaf people in Asia countries will have low academic and social status. And our center believes that by providing training to talented deaf people in sign linguistics and sign language documentation will help them to will empower them to promote sign language and deaf awareness in the, in the society. And with the use of the Asian Sign Bank, they can create sign language dictionaries, sign language teaching materials, they can teach sign language, and even support the development of sign language research, research center in the university in Asia countries. So the strategy of our program is to collaborate with the local deaf associations who help us to identify talented deaf person to join our program. And then we develop a formal certificate training program to upgrade the academic status of the deaf trainees. And we will also work with the local universities to nurture expertise in sign linguistics. Currently, we have established lectures with Japan, Indonesia, and Sri Lanka as they have completed their training earlier on at CUHK. And now we are training deaf people from Myanmar, helping them to construct data for the Asian Side Bank and so that they can use data to teach sign language at the university. The training is based at the Center for Sign Linguistics and Deaf Studies of the Chinese University of Hong Kong, and with the support from different external experts of various disciplines. And these are only some of the experts that we have invited. The experts are from maybe in sign linguistics, in teaching methodology, etc. The framework of our program, you can think of, is like a tree. The rules are the local universities and local deaf associations, which help us to absorb the deaf people into our program. And during the program, we will provide sub-degree program to bridge the deaf trainees to higher education. Our training includes sign language documentation, research skills, etc. And upon graduation, our deaf trainees will go back to their country as a researcher or as a teacher, just like the fruits go back to the soil as a fertilizer and breed more new trees. Our program has already generated a team of deaf and hearing researchers that are expert in sign linguistics and sign language teaching. For example, the girl on the left, Miss Laura, she completed our training, and she graduated from the Chinese University of Hong Kong, majored in linguistics last year, and she is now a chairperson of the Sign Language Research Center in the University of Indonesia. 
and the pictures on the, at the right are the deaf trainees. They have also graduated and they returned it to Sri Lanka and set up, set up the training labs to teach sign language in, Indonesia, in Sri Lanka. This is what I've said before. This is, this is the research, Sign Language Research Center set up at Indonesia, University of Indonesia. And, okay. and this is the teaching labs that has been set up in Sri Lanka. You can see our deaf graduates can become either a deaf sign language researcher or just like this, they are deaf become a sign language teacher. Besides setting up sign language research centers and teaching units, our graduates also attended different conferences internationally and public activities to raise the awareness of the existence of sign linguistics research. For example, this is the pictures of Swing Day, Swing Day participated in a conference in Japan in 2015. And these are the pictures of the participating in a conference in 2013 in Hong Kong. And more photos showing that they have been attending a lot of different conferences. So the Asian Side Bank is like a backbone of the whole training process. It is a permanent archive of Asian Side Languages. With the Side Bank, it supports the data access of sign language research. And there is a function in the Asian Side Bank that they can, it can automatically generate teaching books and sign language dictionaries. And these books and these materials can help the Asian countries to develop sign language research and sign language teaching. It is unfortunate that today I don't have the time to show you the demonstration, but I'm very welcome you're very welcome to come to me after this session and I can show you the demonstration if you want. So the way it works is like this. The deaf researchers contributes sign language data to the Asian side bank, it, either in a photo, in line drawings, in video clips, and then the Asian side bank will generate teaching books and dictionaries back to the Asian countries. And the most important thing is that the whole process is done by our deaf graduates, not by me in Hong Kong and not by any, any professors in Hong Kong. What we do in Hong Kong is to maintain the Asian Side Bank and to enhance its function by the feedback from the deaf researchers. For example, you can see the output of the teaching materials have different layouts because it is told by the deaf researchers, researchers that they want different lists out in their country. And what do we see for our future is that we will set up a virtual Asia Institute of Sign Linguistics. We can support inter-institutional collaboration in developing sign language research. We can sharing the sign language resources through the Asian Sign Bank. And we can help the development in sign linguistic and sign language documentation, sign language teaching, sign interpretation, and education for the deaf. And thank you. These are all our deaf graduates. <laughs>
pan-European bank. In Austria, we are number one in banking. What we offer our customer is new and innovative apps and digital services. Um, often we are the first or only banker in, in Austria. We are constantly working to further improve usability of our existing digital services. In, in fact of this, we introduced uh, smart banking in sign language. But before I come to smart banking in sign language, let me say a few words about smart banking. Because smart banking is not an app. Smart banking is not a new online banking. Smart banking is more. Um, smart banking is a personal advice in addition to our branch offer. Our opening hours are Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and services available around the clock. Um, we offer the complete product range of Bank Austria and this saves valuable time because it's not necessary for a customer to go to a branch anymore. So this is a comprehend, comprehensive and free support um, we do this via video telephony or the video conference. The customers can write us message directly in online banking. They can use telephone or also short message service. Um, in one sentence, smart banking is banking business when, where, and how you want. So, discover the world of smart banking. Smart banking, we offer a new modern support service because your banking, so your smart banking advisor is now where you are, not in a branch. Um, the video advice from the comfort of your own home. So this means technology makes life easier. How does this work? Um, we have a software, this is GoToMeeting from Log Me In. This is what we use to make conferences with our customers. So with this device, you can see and hear your bank advisor. We can also share documents on your screen at home. This saves time. And of course, we, we have other longer opening hours than normal branches in Austria. So this service, we extend it by smart banking in sign language. So this is a unique barrier-free service of Bank Austria, and no one else in Bank Austria is with this service in banking. So what we offer is sign language. Hearing impaired customers can enjoy proof and advice of Bank Austria by video telephony. The concept, as I said, is very simple. So they can, you can do your banking from where and when you want. It works because we have now three bank advisors which can communicate, it, can communicate in sign language without using an interpreter. One of those three is a native speaker in Austrian sign language and will be soon certified uh, interpreter. The best thing is this service is for our customers for free. About security, um, security is very important for us. So no matter in which way you communicate with us, your data are always secure. For this reason, we, our customers have signatory numbers. They got a password and we use pin identity number to identify our customers. So this was smart banking in sign language in short words. And what Thomas Tom said at the beginning, what we will try now to show you is a live conference to one of my colleagues in the office. This is Ms. Nicole Rima. She's the native speaker in, and you will have the possibility to see the service like the customer can see it at home. So I hope the technique will work. If 
all just be patient for a few minutes. Just one moment. So only one minute, or well, one moment, I hope it doesn't work. I need a minute. <laughs> <laughs> only a few seconds, hope so. Can you wire money into my bank account? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? You told us we have time. Yes. <laughs> if you don't mind being patient, we've got a wee bit of time. So, now you can see my colleague, Ms. Rima. So as you can see, this is the, the device we, we use with our customers. So the right side, you see the audit, but normally you will see yourself sitting at home in front of your webcam. So, yeah, that's smart banking in sign language. <laughs> and you ask her how much it would cost me per month in interest for an overdraft. <laughs> The interest would be 11.5% per month. That's an outrageous amount, but with service like that, I will come straight to Bank Austria. <laughs> <laughs> For you, we'll make it cheaper. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention. René, thank you very much indeed. We've, we've got a, a, a little bit of time because our um, dead end is at half past four. So I had been talking with some of our panelists earlier, and um, there are just a couple of things that I wanted to chat with them about, and I hope you don't mind if I throw out just one or two questions. And first, I was going to start with you, Monica. We were talking earlier on about sign language and the fact that it's recognized in the Constitution here, but not offered in schools, but then I wanted to go a bit further than that and say, and what, what is being done and how do you address the whole issue of sign language needing to be used in 
further education, and I don't mean further education in terms of tertiary education, university education, but if you are a professional, if you are an accountant, or if you are an architect, and you have continuing education, or if you need to be able to do courses at your job to be able to move up in a hierarchy and you need to have that training. How, how do you find that addressed? It's going away. It's quick. Okay, I think that's a very interesting question uh, because uh, it's a, a great problem. In, I think in Austria, if um, uh, if you want to make a further education, then you have to uh, find um, a, a big budget for for or for your in interpreters, or you find two, three, four other persons who have the same interests. That there is enough budget uh, that uh, from from the government because. Because only for one person is too much to, uh, to pay the, all the inter interpreters for your own further education. So uh, do you have to find two, three other persons? Then uh, maybe you have the chance that you can get catch the budget and, 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 and uh, interpreters for your uh, further education. Um, so what we are doing is um, we try to offer a lot of uh, different um, fields of, of further education. If you make book holding or you need a program for a technician program, you're maybe your a signer and uh, your, 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 your drawings, architectural drawings, and you need C C ID or something like that, such a program, then you can learn it uh, in our institute from, uh, from, from our role models in sign language. But if you need a special um, uh, program, so, so then you need um, really uh, a special educated uh, uh, education um, um, institute, and then you need sign language interpreters. And this is a, pro a problem, and uh, it would be nice to discuss also with other countries how they solve these problems if there is only one person who has interest, personal interest for lifelong learning education for them, how they can, can fulfill it. Thank you. Um, thanks very much. And I know, Corinne, you had experience of, of this in the States, didn't you, within private business? Yeah. Also, just to respond to what you were saying, mm. and I'll talk about that in a second, mm. we're fortunate in the United States that we have laws about mm -hmm. accessibility. Mm -hmm. And if a student is identified in school as needing a particular um, accessibility, like a sign language interpreter, they can bring that document into higher education. Mm -hmm. And it is the responsibility of higher education to deliver it. Mm -hmm. So, um, but they have to have that docu documented before they get into higher education. And it's not um, financially dependent upon you have to find someone else with the same interest. Um, but the thinking is that if you educate a person well and you invest in them early, that it will be returned as a taxpayer <laughs> later. Um, if a person can become an architect and make a lot of money later, they're going to pay a lot of taxes and the government, government will more than recoup their cost. Um, what Tom was referring to was we had a situation a number of years ago where um, Walmart, uh, which is one of the biggest retailers in the world, was sued in the United States by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission for not making training accessible to deaf people. So this meant that they couldn't apply for jobs and they couldn't move up within the organization. And they had um, several hundred training um, pieces of software that they offered to their um, employees. And they were told that they had to put sign language in it. And Walmart said it was impossible. Um, and by some miracle, Walmart found us and we actually put it in. So that um, dispelled the lawsuit. And the training became accessible. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and I have a question um, for you, Rene, which was, what was the initial reaction from your first time users when they went online? Okay, this service we're offering only for appointment. 
and we are really well booked. Also, the three uh, advisors are booked all day, and we got really positive uh, feedback from the customers. Yeah, it's it's cool. They say it's cool. Great. It helps them uh, saving time, saving money. Great. That's a good good start, if nothing else. And you, you were talking about the different um, countries that you are already in: Japan, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, and now you're doing some work in Myanmar. Um, two questions. One was, do you only do anything with kind of large centralized universities in those countries? And that's the first question. And then the second question is, where after Myanmar? Where do you see the progression for other universities? Uh, first of all, the, the first, for the first question, we, in fact, we talk to different universities of different in, in the countries and see which universities are interested in setting up this sign linguistics research center which is willing to help cooperate with cooperate with us right. mm -hmm. and so we are not only focusing on the large university of that country yeah. and for your second question for Myanmar because uh, it is still the very initial stage of the training, and now we only started the program for three years in, in Myanmar. We have only trained the, the deaf trainees how to document the sign language and the very basic sign linguistics knowledge. So in the future, we, we are talking to the university in Myanmar to whether they can set up they're willing to set up the research center there, and if yes, then the student will join, the cent join that university to, to continue their research. But the problem is the, the education level of deaf people in Myanmar is quite far behind to hearing students, so we need more time to, to push them, push up their education level before they are qualified to enter the university. Thank you very much indeed. And I have two more minutes and I have one more question for Corrine. Corrine, you must have a great deal of IP, both for hardware and software. Um, extending it to other countries, is that one of your aims and how can we help? Um, and I'm sure Corrine would like to speak with people who might be able to talk with her, is that correct? Yes. Or is that presumptuous of me? No, no. Uh, I always say um, we're very accessible and uh, our work in Morocco came from a random call one afternoon from a researcher in Morocco asking if we wanted to work together. And I right. said, sure, but um, half, half of the people that you hire, at least half have to be deaf. Um, so that was sort of new. Uh, for them over there. But essentially, um, like I said, we have um, CD-based and internet-based software. And we have stories, and we have games, and sign language instruction. Um, and th there's been over 70 products over the years. So like in Morocco, we decided because the internet was weak to, to use our CD-based IP. Um, but all someone has to do is approach us, and what we can very easily do is to swap out languages um, on many of the software engines and very quickly make products. So I was thinking in terms of what you're doing, um, how easy it would be to take the database, yeah. incorporate what we're doing, and you have instant games and uh, resources. Thank you very much. And Corinne and her husband are here for the rest of the <laughs> conference, so please do get in contact with her. Just coming up to half past, I would love to thank my team, and I'll do it from left to right. Matt, Monica, you, René, mm -hmm. and Corinne. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Yes, it's a question for the Mr. Cheng. And very interesting, 
in the in your exposition about the investigation in sign language linguistics and the Center for Deaf Studies. We hope to replicate your model in South America. How can we do it with you? Yes, uh, thank you. And I, when I saw your presentation earlier, I found that in the situation in South America is very like in Asian countries. Uh, yes, the, deaf, the education levels of deaf people is quite falling far behind the, you know, the hearing people. So, uh, yes, we can, uh, maybe you can, I can leave our contest with you and then we can talk about this later on to see how we can cooperate in the future. Yes. Thank, thank you very you. much indeed. Right, thank you very much everybody. And um, I have a housekeeping um, note, which is make sure you're downstairs um, at the reception desk before five o'clock so that we can all walk over to the rotunda where we will have the premiere of the Zero Project hymn and the unveiling of the haptic artwork. Once again, thank you very much indeed for being with us this afternoon, and thanks once again to our absolutely wonderful panel. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.